Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe to the page. And today we're going to be diving into Stellar Odyssey by Unparalleled Comics. And this comic I freaking love, you guys. It's really awesome, it's unique. It, it branches off from one story to multiple, in an anthology essentially. You know, it's all about space exploration and colonizing other planets and moving forward. So I'm really enjoying it. If, if anybody that knows me, they, they know I love this kind of stuff. And one last thing before we hop into it is Unparalleled Comics is going to be dropping Operation Eclipse. Now this is a live Kickstarter that's going to be starting on May 12th and ending June 12th. From all the sketches that I've seen that they've released, it looks like something that's going to be really awesome and fun. So if you guys have opportunity, be sure to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can go check it out for yourself and maybe even help contribute to the cause. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now getting into this issue, there are many people that contributed to this. And I'm not going to go through and butcher all of their names because I don't want to do that. But I will give a shout out to Ray Merrick and Jay Sloan, who were both editor-in-chief and art director on most of this, and the writer and illustrator for this first part that we're getting into. So we dive in and we, we're in the system of Melar Status System, and we're focusing on a planet or a moon by the name of Bellaterra, and Bellaterra is the home to the Bellaterra Knights Training Center. And what we're given is an introduction to a, a few characters. We have JC and Mason. And these guys, really what the, what we're seeing is, is just people being people. Like, even on the, the brinks of space, in the middle of nowhere, exploring unknown, uncharted territory. You know, they're, they're people with relationships and friendships. We see them getting ready to push off. We see them playing with the dog, Callisto. And we're really just getting a, a, an idea of who they are. And we get some inner monologue talking about the struggles that go along with having to go out and do this day after day, not knowing if you're going to be coming back. And their job is to explore and find places that are possible for colonizing for humanity, for humanity's survival. You know, every mission's a journey for them, but this is what's needed to be able to keep things in check, keep things peaceful, keep resources coming in, you know, every mission is an odyssey. And this is where we're introduced to our second story, which is the Knights of Bellaterra. And they bring us to the Meganola system, to a planet by the name of Caltho. And we're dropped right into the fray. We see Ryan and Mason completely surrounded by what seems to be frog-type amphibious creatures that stand on two legs. And they're wielding these swords, which seem to be of, of electricity or maybe some kind of energy source. And we see them just slaying these guys left and right. We see Mason get surrounded completely and uh, presumably being drug away. Ryan's able to break the line and cut through and get to him and come to find out that these creatures had a nest nearby and that's why they were so agitated and so persistent on attacking them and they were hired by a local village to to check this out and so they go to the villagers and they talk to them you know asking them if you know they had been touching the eggs or something of that nature to provoke these monsters to be attacking you and the villagers swear that they do nothing to provoke it they just attack and so the two, while seeming a bit reluctant to go out and do this, they grab some, essentially, bombs and go out and blow up these eggs. You know, and they, they voice their their discomfort with, with what's going on and with having to do that. And that there may be more to this story than that they don't know yet. And as I, they go to leave planet, they receive word from a breakout at a prison. And so they hop up and they take off. And this is where we pick up with our next story, Vagabond Blues. And Vagabond Blues brings us to the Holonis system. It's pretty much an asteroid belt or field that's frequented by the low ends, the scum, the bounty hunters, the criminals. And what we see is a, an introduction to a crew. And they're getting word that, that somebody's come for them. And this somebody seems to be a bounty hunter of some type. And he goes by the name of Gravelock with a new team of bounty hunters. And so they're after this man with the cowboy hat, his name is Attila. And he hands something off to one of his partners in crime and says, get back to the ship. And I got this taken care of. And then that's when all hell breaks loose. Now Attila seems to have the upper hand for a minute until he's shot in the shoulder. And that's where we see his crew arrive 
and they're pretty much bailing him out of this situation. And so that's where they pack up and get out of there. Now, they seem to be going and delivering a package. Now, they're, they're not specific on where to or anything of that nature, but they seem to be a, a, a crew of definitely people that are wanted. And not just wanted, but wanted for a big bounty if you got people like this coming after you. Because it's going to be really interesting to see in which direction this goes. And that is where we jump into the fourth story. And that is Stellar Odyssey. And this brings us into an uncharted system somewhere in deep space beyond the solar systems that have been mapped by Bellaterra. A prison station orbits around a red dwarf. And inside this prison we're met with Kalia Thorne. And she's she's seems to be like a, a fierce warrior. She's never been defeated in battle. And while it may be a little odd saying that while she's in prison, this is exactly where she wants to be. And then we see the guards talking about, you know, about who she is, about the danger that she has and can do. And they're even speculating that, you know, if why she's here. Like if she's here, she wants to be here. And this is where we see her throw up and she throws up a vial of some kind of corrosive manner that just takes these cuffs off like they're nothing and she's able to break out of the prison guards completely unaware of this all happening while discussing it's a possibility of what could be happening and she's here because she wants she was looking for a man by the name of Roswell and she was sent here by uh some kind of king I'm assuming a king of a planet or something of that nature being the vast exploration they have I'm sure there are those planets that have kingdoms and things of that nature and what at first appears to be a rescue mission she starts asking if he's told anybody about the research that he's done for the king and so on and so forth and he goes to tell her no and almost instantly she just snaps his neck and kills the guy right there on the spot and takes off so it seems like she is an assassin and she literally got onto this prison transport just so she could take this guy out as one of her contracts for the king and now she's not an assassin for the king she is just an assassin for hire she has no technical loyalties to anybody specifically and this is where we see her talk about her making sure that she gets the money because she she's got her kid's birthday coming up so it's bringing it down to a little bit bringing her humanity to where you can understand it a little bit more maybe and that is where this comic will end let me know what you guys think i am absolutely loving this so far it's really unique i really think it could be its own tv show with how in-depth you can go with these characters and the different directions that you can take it so yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and like I said, be sure to check out their Kickstarter on Operation Eclipse starting May 12th, ending June 12th. I'll make sure to leave a link so you guys can check it out, and until the next video.